you play the fucking accordion. Oh, hello there, Rasta Mice. My name's Pete Donaldson, husband to a murdered wife, father to a murdered son, and here's your monthly video game roundup. First up, your new releases. Eat them all up nice. They told me that if I ever turned this flashlight on, I would die. They told me that about everything. I mean, I don't even know why they bother giving me this stuff if they didn't want me to use it. It's pointless. Portal 2. It's out now, and if you haven't got it, oh my god, what are you still doing watching this? Go and get it now. What do you mean you're at work? Tell your boss you're through with this shit and get down Game Station. The job centre can wait. Put simply, Portal 2 is easily my game of the year so far, despite what American television will have you believe about the insens insensitive. Ins a father is shocked at the insens uh, insensitivity he says he witnessed. Fatty, adopted fatty, 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 no parents. Did you hear that? The character in the popular kids video game is actually taunted for being adopted. Anyway, it's great. Seriously, you will love this game, whichever vagina portal you happen to jump out of back in the day. Okay, don't panic. It's, it's, we, we can, I can still stop it. Not a problem. There's a password. It's fine. I'll just, I'll just hack it. Not a problem. Out today, or Friday, for all you calendar aficionados, is the detective who done it, the murder I mean, L.A. Noir. A post Second World War romp in which that fella from Mad Men rises through the ranks of the Los Angeles Police Department with impeccable hair and even more impeccable clue hunting skills. You needed the money, so you killed her. That's not true, goddammit! Everyone who's played it seems to be hinting that it's the return of the point and click adventure, a genre that I would happily lick the boots of. Yeah, like that. Ugh. We love, we hate, we still have Also out in the next few days is Codemasters Dirt 3. The reviews are in and it's pretty bloody good all told. It's putting the rally back into the rally game and with a kick and soundtrack to boot, including musical rumory from Biffy, Chromio, Everything Everything and Glamour of the Kill. Bye. Autumn should see El Shaddai slash its way into our stores, a frankly insane but damn stylish game that came out a few weeks ago in Japan, which takes very loosely the Jewish Book of Enoch, slams it into a food processor, drinks the results, and then barfs that into a modern games console in perhaps the least blasphemous way possible. As Devil May Cry style button mashers go, it's one of the most artistically accomplished, mixing 3D hitty blocky gameplay with short passages of 2D platformery. It's kind of unfortunate that the best way to describe it is probably the awful boilerplate phrase, religion on acid, but it really is definitely one of the more interesting titles that you're going to see this year. Ma'am? Who are you? We're detectives. The busy post E3 summer schedule should give us a new title in the long-running Driver series, but this time good cop Tanner will need to do some work on his suspension as he's hitting San Francisco. I've spent a good couple of hours playing a preview of this one, and neat tricks like being able to jump from one car to another instantly, and the mixing of pre-rendered video over the main game helps to keep the graphics pacey and stutter-free, and it works really well. One, I think, to pick up when it comes out. Looks like I just got my chance. While looking into the future at forthcoming open world loveliness is all well and good, but gazing back upon the giants which gave them the shoulders to stand on is important as well. So, with that in mind... <laughs> I thought we'd jump right back to 1991, back when Kevin Costner was proving that everything he does, he does it for you with catapults, and the general populace were going crazy for the fella in green. So step forward the criminally underrated and unlicensed Adventures of Robin Hood from Millennium Interactive, who would go on to later publish the equally superb and forgotten Diggers, Deadline and James Pond 2 Robocod. 
The game begins as Robin's been chucked out of his nice big castle and you're tasked with guarding a rather impudent Robin through Sherwood Forest, robbing the rich, assembling your merry men and wooing Maid Marion. The great thing about this title was that it was one of the first games on the Amiga to give you what was essentially an open world, which is a buzzword that gets chucked around way too often and I realise I'm not helping by chucking it around now, but this technical feat didn't necessarily start with the Grand Theft Auto series. You could spend absolutely hours just pacing around. The peal of a far-off bell meaning that a grand announcement wasn't far behind. You could pay minstrels to follow you around with a song or two, and you could take on a multitude of side quests. Graphically, it was no great shakes, but the changing of the seasons was kind of new, and the whole thing just oozed campness, with a real playful quality to boot. In summary, it was a good one. It's that time again, bad video game box art. Artists that were probably in the midst of some sort of breakup. I just had a lot on. In at three this week, the boys are back. Yes, the boys are back in town. It's blood and guts. Seemingly a game about Thin Lizzy. In at two, this is like religion on acid. It's Zen and two. Finally for now, repressed memories of child abuse. I want my mummy. So there you have it, another month, another dispatch from the front line of gaming. I've been Pete Donaldson, and like I always say, kiss me.